Welcome back to the Visual Center. The other day I was editing a photo shoot and I came across a new feature in Photoshop that I hadn't worked with before. And it's a new feature that came out in the last couple versions called Neural Filters. And I wanted to go over that today. Now this isn't something that I've used a whole lot and I'm definitely not an expert in it, but it was a really neat feature and I think it could be helpful for a lot of people. It is still in beta mode, but it has a lot of cool potential. So I wanted to pull open an image with you guys and kind of explore this new feature in Photoshop. So I have a few images open here in Lightroom that I was gonna to use to illustrate this new filter. So let me grab one of these. Uh, I'll probably grab this one and let's open that up in Photoshop. There's a keyboard shortcut for that in Lightroom. If you select the image you want, Command E, and it should open in Photoshop. There we go. Let me turn off my rulers real quick, Command R, and I'm actually gonna zoom in here to my face because this is the filter that I'm gonna show you guys. Now you notice that my facial expression in this image is uh, a little mundane, a little nondescript, and I did that on purpose specifically to show you this, this filter. Um, so to get to neural filters, you'll find that under filter and then neural filters, and that's gonna open up a new window. And you can see over here on the right hand side, there's different neural filters that you can use. Now there's a lot of really cool filters in here and I'll be making more videos on some of these as I explore them. So stay tuned, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Let's get into these filters. The one I wanna start with in this video is called Smart Portrait. This is really cool. Um, if you hover over each of these, it gives you a, a brief explanation of what each of them are. Smart Portrait creatively adjusts portraits by generating new elements, emotions, hair, facial age. So you can see this filter has a lot of potential and it utilizes Adobe Sensei, which is Adobe's artificial intelligence algorithm to help it accomplish its tasks. Let's take a look to see what it does. So the first thing you wanna do is click the on button for the filter you wanna use. Now, if you look up here, there's this little message. It says this filter processes image data in the cloud. So some of these tasks can take a few seconds to a few minutes to actually go into effect. So you do have to be a little bit patient with it. It's dependent on your internet speed. So if we look here, we have a section for expressions. We have a section for subject, and that's the subject that's highlighted here if I zoom out. Adobe Sensei automatically detected a face in the image and it highlighted it in this box. So anything in this box is what's gonna be affected. And what it does is it actually maps the human face and with the expressions, it warps and distorts parts of the human face to give it these different expressions. So let's start up here in the ex expressions and then we'll move into subjects. So let me zoom back in here. Now I told you I had an expressionless face on purpose, um, specifically to mess with these expressions. Um, and there's one called happiness here. So if we just check that to turn it on and then you can move happiness up or down, so more happiness or less happiness. If only life were as easy as these sliders. So if we add more happiness, I'll just go about halfway here, and you do have to wait a few seconds before it actually goes into effect. And there you go. It's added a little bit of a smile and happiness to my face. It's actually really, really interesting the way this works. If we turn this off and go back, if we go back and forth, we can see the different parts of the face that this is affecting. It's not just tweaking the edges of the mouth. Now, years ago, they added facial recognition to the Liquify tool, and you're actually able to grab the corners of the mouth and add a smile. Um, this is going beyond that. If we take a closer look at what's going on here, you can see that it pulls the ears back a little bit. Okay, it does tweak the corners of the mouth, but it also tries to distort the rest of the face to simulate the muscles of the face moving in a smile. It also affects the eyebrow area because you use your eyebrows and your forehead when you smile. Now I was messing with this the other day and I was really, really surprised at what happens when you crank the slider all the way. So let me show you. We're gonna grab the slider and we're gonna go all the way to 50. Isn't that crazy? It added teeth to the photograph. Now it didn't do a very good job. And like I said, these filters are in beta mode. And so they're always improving it with every update that they push out. But it's incredible that they added teeth to the image when my mouth was closed to begin with. So if we back off on this and not do the extreme, 
you can see now it just gives a hint of teeth showing through. Now these are not my teeth at all. Um, I do not smile like this, but it is quite impressive that I would think to do that in the first place. Now obviously there are limitations to this because it's not very, it's not perfect, but already it's kind of incredible what they were able to accomplish with just moving a slider and making somebody happy or sad. So if you go into the negative, you can actually make the person look sadder. So we turn the happiness off. There's my straight face. And if we turn it back on, there I've gotten a little bit more sad. Now if we go to the extreme of this, like, like I said, it's not perfect, but uh, it can be really fun. In regards to the teeth, that is something that I've messed around with. Um, I was really curious as to whether or not it would use the same set of teeth in every image. And I actually used it on an image of my kids and it actually recognized that the face was a younger face, so it used a different set of teeth um, in the mouth. So it doesn't have just one set of teeth to add in every photo. It analyzes the face and grabs a set of teeth it thinks is appropriate for that particular person, which I find really, really interesting. Okay, let's play around with some of these other sliders just real quick, just so you can see what they do. So you have the surprise slider. If we crank that all the way, this one's a little weird. Um, it definitely did some weird things to my face. I did some things to some other photos and it worked a little bit better. Um, but what it does, it tries to put an O in the lips and it tries to raise the eyebrows, widen the eyes a little bit. And that's kind of what it's focusing on. Let's go back to neutral and we'll go negative on this to see what happens. And it's, that's interesting. It kind of rounds out the face a little bit and kind of flattens the mouth. Kind of a, hmm, I'm content type look. Okay, let's turn this one off. Go back to zero on that, turn that off. Let's mess with the anger one. So if we crank that one up. Yeah, so it brings the brow and the forehead down a little bit. Um, maybe tries to enlarge the lower lip. This is a very caveman-ish anger. <laughs> let's see what the opposite of anger is. If we go into the negative, so it kind of goes into a little content and happy. Um, but it did some weird things to my eye there. Okay, so that's the expressions. Um, and that's really, really interesting what it's able to do there. Let's take a look real quick at the subject section. Now, in the subject area, we have sliders for facial age, for gaze, hair thickness, head direction, and light direction. And these are really, really interesting. This first one uh, can adjust the age of a person. It can make them look a little bit older or a little bit younger. Okay. Um, I'm going to go extreme here. Now prepare yourself. Let's go extreme here. And this is what I'm going to look like when I'm old. Boom. <laughs> really, really interesting. Um, the interesting thing, thing about this is that it looks like one of my uncles almost, um, which I found really, really interesting. But, um, yeah, so it recognized that I had facial hair on my face, and so it added uh, more white into the facial hair. Uh, it made my hair more white, made it a little bit longer, uh, receded my hairline a little bit more than it is already. It added wrinkles in my forehead uh, and a little bit in my face. So let's bring this back to neutral. Now you notice if I go back to neutral, it's not like the original if I turn this off. You can see it still made some changes, so you do want to be aware of that. Now these other ones get really interesting, and I'm really interested on how they're going to improve these, because they can be super, super helpful in specific situations like family portraits. Now this first one right here is called gaze. This actually affects the direction that your eyes are looking. So if I turn this on, and I crank it all the way to the right, it'll actually take my irises and move them to gaze to the right. Really, really interesting. Now, it's not perfect and it looks really, really fake in this image, but this is a close-up portrait. If this was a family portrait, a big group shot, and you were just trying to affect the way somebody's looking, that detail isn't gonna matter that much because you're gonna be so zoomed out that just that little shift is gonna go a long way. And then if I move it back this way, it moves the eyes to look in the other direction. And I'm really impressed on how it tries to maintain the shadows and the catchlight in the eyes. 
Really, really impressive. Okay, that's gaze. Let's turn that off. So let's talk about the output of these things. So applying it to your image. Adobe has been on this really big thing, which is awesome. All the new features that they've been adding to Photoshop are non-destructive, which is a great thing when you're editing images is to stay non-destructive. So let me show you what that looks like here in this tool. So if I did, let's do the happiness. Down here at the bottom, I've got options. Um, and I'm out of frame here a little bit, but we have current layer, duplicate layer. Uh, what you can't see, it's just out of frame here. Duplicate layered, a diff duplicate layer masked, new layer, and smart filter. And so you have options on how to export this. I'm gonna leave it on new layer. I'm gonna click okay. Okay, and so now it's adjusted my image, but like I said, it's non-destructive. So it added it as a new layer. I can turn this off and on, which is great. Especially because I can then come into this layer and edit it to make it look even better. So new layer. And so if you don't like it, delete it and you're back to your original. Anyways, these filters are really, really interesting. I just wanted to share them with you. That was kind of an adventure into the smart portrait filter. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions about Photoshop or Lightroom, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.